Good morning everyone. So back to this Audi A4 2 litre diesel again. So, so I told you a couple of jobs I was going to do. So I put a new coolant tank on it because it was leaking. I put a 50-50 antifreeze uh, mixture in it. So I think this was, is it G30? Let me see, I got it. Ding bro. <coughs> Let's see, that stuff, long life antifreeze. I think that's a G30 equivalent. Anyway, so that went into it. Uh, I took off the EGR valve and it, indeed it was well gummed up. So I cleaned that, that all out. Uh, I'll post a link to a good video how to get into this. I'll no bother showing you, but uh, guys, I think it was at Wheels and Motors showed you how to do that. So that's all cleaned out. So, but it was really bad. So the next thing we want to do is do the DPF uh, treatment. So as I said to you, I need to use the sensor up the back there. So you can see there, there's two pipes going up. Wait, there, get a light. Let's illuminate this. So you can see there's two pipes going up to the back there. So I had to find out which one was before the DPF. And indeed, it's the one that I've got my little vacuum pressure gauge into. And I'll rev the car and just let you see it. So it's actually the, it's the thicker of the two pipes. Sorry, thicker, the one that's a bit wider. The orifice is a bit wider, so I'll show you when I rev it up. And this is the one we're going to put the treatment into. Put that there. It's always the same, eh? I'll try and hold the camera out there, rev it and let you see it. So you can actually see there. So, that's the one we need to go for there, we've identified the right one, so what I'm going to do, do is take this car into the countryside and carry out this treatment because one of my subscribers said there's some amount of black smoke comes out of it, if it does the job. So, we'll try that treatment right into there and, in fact, before I do that I'll take a, a reading from my scan tool what the pressure is in the DPF at two and a half thousand revs because I've seen one guy on YouTube he's called the D, the DPF Doctor Network Darren he managed to recover a DPF and I think it was about 235 millibars at two and a half thousand revs so that's about three psi so let's we'll see how we get on because he managed to get it down to five millibars which is nothing negligible so we'll try that as well so Take a car out of the countryside and uh, we'll see how we get on it. But the other thing, I'll need to maybe leave it for half an hour because it lights the car to be cold uh, when you're doing this treatment. So, I'll get back to you. Cheers. So that's me drawing up the pids. Top one's engine speed, then it's temperature, then it's the pressure in the, the filter, and then it's the pressure offset. So, we'll see what this is like at 2,500 waves. Go 300, 312 millibar. We'll just leave it at that. Look how rapid the temperature rises in there. So, put that off the new. So, we'll have to recover from 312 millibar, which seems like a lot. Anyway, cheers. So, there you go. That's that's actually all I could get the, the tube inserted into this, and you actually can start to see it starting to bend as I put any more pressure on it. What I tried to do was straighten it as much as possible and then insert it but maybe that'll do fine so instructions are to take this can and shake it well and you have to give it you have to empty the full can and between three to five bursts but between bursts you have to leave it for five minutes so this treatment's got to take about 25 minutes even just to get the stuff in and leave it in so i don't think we'll be going to the country we'll just do it here and then take it a drive and we'll take it for there. So a good shake, then attach it to the top of the tube, and then three to five bursts. So, so that's me gave it its first burst, and actually some of its 
backtracking a little bit, uh, you can actually see the colour of it is black. Which, for some reason I thought it would be white, but it's black. And uh, kind of gooey stuff. So that's its first one, so I have to leave it five minutes, then give it its next one. But all this done when the engine is cold. Now, I gave the tube a wee wiggle after I put the, the first wee treatment down, so you can see I've got it in a little bit longer. So maybe the stuff going down there has lubricated the tube, and you can insert the, the tube a wee bit further, so I'll let you know how I get on. Hopefully the treatment just goes in, and doesn't start to back up through the pipe. I'll let you know how it goes. So that's me gave it a second treatment, so I would think it's had, I gave it about a 10 second burst. And I didn't until that black stuff started, the treatment started to appear back up through the tube. So I didn't see much point in keeping going, and it was just going to drip down there onto the tray. So that's it has its second treatment, leave it for five minutes. So this is the third time I've got to spray it in, I'll let you see what happens when it starts foaming back on itself. So I think I've maybe put in about half a can by this stage. Let's see, here we go. So it starts to foam back out itself. Not too bad right now. I think I've got to stop at that. So maybe be over half a can. So that's my third treatment. But uh, I'll leave it for another five minutes. And then between times you've got to keep shaking the can vigorously. So that was me just done my fourth treatment and I should keep shaking that can, keep the pressure up. So I've done that and you can see there, can you back to it? It's disappeared again, it is working. So that's four treatments, but I think I maybe need to do about six or seven treatments to get the whole lot in. Anyway, so that's me four treatments. Now that's it, had its fifth treatment. And you can see that the goo backing up again. Uh, I think there's still about a quarter of a can left in this. So I say I think it's going to have about six or seven treatments. I don't think it really matters. As long as you get most of the stuff, get all the stuff in and let it lie there. Hopefully this, what's ever in this, cleans it out. So that's five treatments. I'll let you know how it got on. There's a discovery. <laughs> I've just realised the stuff that comes out of here is white. And uh, but it's coming back black because that's all the muck or the dirt or the DPF suit coming back up that pipe. So that's the reason it is uh, the colour is black. <laughs> so, I'll let you see it. It's white. There you go. That's the stuff there. So, that's everything connected uh, at the back there. So... We're just looking at that tube, how far it was in, so it was in up to there. That was not too bad actually, not too bad at all, so that was, that was well in. So, what we then do is say, let it idle for five minutes, then give it a run in the countryside. <laughs> countryside, give it a run. So what I've done here, I've put a sheet out, in case it's a lot of black stuff that comes out. And, so we're going to start it, see how it gets on. Let's hope it does that. So we're okay at that. Let's see if anything comes out. Nothing at the moment. It's getting a bit smoky. Is that normal? We'll check this can to see how it's getting on. That was a bit smoky right enough. Let's see if this can take back up where it left off. Maybe it's been too long on idle. It'll come back up it. back in and check. We'll go for the engine speed. We'll go for 
we go temperature before particle ninety five percent one near, but I missed it. Mm. This temperature after. Just look at that. There's the figures at the moment at idle. 800 RPM, the temperature in the catalyst after the filter is 44, but before it's 100, and the pressure is 30. So it's coming down ever so slightly. We'll keep going. Guys, okay, smoke at the back, I tell you. Let me see this. Oof. Boy. Better shut my garage door. We go about three and a half minutes. Let's see the pressure. Indeed, it is. Pressure in the filters 18, 19, keep coming down. Let's hope this works. So we started at 30, we're now at 17. Oh dear. I've now got a flashing battery of light, I wonder where that is. I'll just keep it idling for five minutes. Maybe it's got a fault in the battery, never mind. Pressure's coming down again. Oh. We've got brakes flashing here. What's happening to this machine? Anyway. We're at 15. Yeah, the airbag lights coming in. Oh man. So maybe stuck at fourteen. Plenty of smoke still bailing out the thing. See the figures now. Now at thirteen. Hmm. We'll go and give it a run, see how it goes.
So, here we go. So I've given it a little five minute drive. So you see the pressure at the moment at idles 24, 25. And the temperature before the, the filter's 205 and after it's 247, is that good, bad? I think that'd be good, eh? Because if it was back, loads of back pressure, it would be higher before it than after it. So we'll just take it up to 2,500 revs and see if, if the back pressure's improved. So there's... Still got lots of smoke coming out. So you can see, indeed, our figures have improved. Uh, let's see. There's two and a half. I'm at 130. So I'm less than half of what I was before. So, 500... 500 would be 7 PSI, that would be right. So 100 would be a 50 of that, so that's just over 1 PSI in the exhaust. We want that down lower, but let's see. The smoke seems to have cleared. Maybe with me clearing the fault in the EGR, maybe that's made a big difference to it. Now that 2000, we're at 75, 74. See, this car's gone metal now. Brakes, <laughs> battery, DPF. I take it, if we get that DPF clear enough, I need to reset the parameters to get this to go off. I take it if I went into the scan tool, I could tell it it's had a new DPF. See if it, that would maybe clear that, because you can't clear that DPF light with just a normal uh, clear the faults. In fact, maybe we'll try clearing the faults and see if that comes back. Let me see. See, so we're going to trouble codes. That one should come back. Let's hope the EGR's disappeared. Nah. The EGR's back. I think we can reset the EGR on this. That thing seemed to be moving. Exhaust gas recirculation EGR system valve above upper control limit. Doesn't it like that for some reason. There it's at 2000, so it's 86 millibar. Take it to two and a half thousand. Hundred millibar. It's a third of what it used to be anyway. But we've never solved the problem. The EGR fault code's coming back. I have to scratch my head and think about this one. Well, my friends, I am delighted with this Innotech stuff. Just driving down the road, and the DPF, it just cleared. Still got the faults up. Wait to see this thing go. Full power has been resumed. Fantastic. Sorry about the light here. So, the 12 pound can of DPF Doctor by Innotech approved. Brilliant, it works. So there's the pressure. The idle's eight. And we'll take it up to two and a half thousand. We'll take it up to two. There's two over two. There's two, one. Look at that. 43, we're getting, oh, that was even higher. There's it two, so we're getting 26 millibars. That's just fantastic. Anyway, we need to <laughs> we need to sort out the rest of the faults here. Lights, lights everywhere. Oh man, and women, this car's flung another curveball. So I scanned it for codes again. You can see supply voltage upper limit exceeded. And indeed, if I go into the, I went and touched the alternator. It's absolutely roasting. I'll just let you watch this as I start the car up. This was shooting up to 18 volts. I'm not doing it now. Look at 
at that. 16 volts. Oof. Off ski. The alternator just went in the thing, or the regulator has. Oh man. So let you see this, this is just started overcharging. But the battery light's still on. Yeah. Now here's another thing, I had to put this uh, EGR valve, valve back together, but I just thought I'd check this multi-plug here. Now I've actually cleaned this out, but that was full of oil. You can still see the stains in it, so that EGR valve must be leaking. See the connector down the bottom there, it must be leaking oil into it. So I'll try one more time, maybe to reset the adaptions. But I think that's a kissy death for the EGR valve when it's leaking oil. Now, there's a beautiful sight the DPF light is off, all the lights are off, no beeping, no noises, no warning lights. Oh, ho, ho. yeah, so that's it. Uh, so I took it a little run there. Um, let me see if I can get the figures up here. But uh, I got the DPF load under under 30%. I think the last time I drove it, it was about 20%. Let me see. See this. See when you've had gloves on. This thing, touch screen is no longer. So the car dries fine now, so the only code it's coming back is for the EGR. So what I decided to do was look at the PIDs on the Veris. So I... I put the air mass meter in, so that was actual and target, and then I looked at the duty cycle EGR valve. And you can see there on the bottom one, you can see that it tries to open the EGR valve, but nothing actually happens. And yet if you look at the top right, you see the actual, the EGR valve does not open because the air mass amount would drop down and it doesn't do it. It does it in target, that's what it's looking for, but actually it's not doing it so... I need to replace the EGR valve, so I spoke to Dingbro and they said this is a common failing on this car because it's how it's positioned, because the electronics are at the bottom and all the engine oil or turbo oil or whatever finds its way into that circuit and it shorts it out. That's why it's, it says on there it was a short to power or something like that, so I need to change that. But in saying that, I don't think the EGR caused the, the DPF to block up. I think it was because there was a hole... And the header tank and it wasn't getting up to its proper operating temperature so it therefore could not do a regen because it couldn't develop enough heat but in saying that it's done it's, it's done that Innotech stuff fantastic and has done it cleared it so we'll change the egr valve cheers <laughs>